Okay, this video tutorial is uh, for Strat Dragon, uh, who's over in the uh, Dice Forum. Um, he had he was uh, following along uh, with uh, my low poly boat tutorial, and actually I uh, wasn't intending to create that good of a model in there to be used for anything. I, I may have approached it a little bit different than I I did uh, in there, but anyway. Uh, it is it was a usable model but uh, some modifications need to be added to it and uh, what he did is he added a uh, level of smoothing I believe and uh, when he did his uh, boat pretty much collapsed that it kinda looked like a some kind of super sci-fi surfboard <laughs> so, so uh, what I'd like to do uh, is kind to kind of uh, show you uh, how to overcome that. Um, when you add smoothing levels uh, to a model, um, well let me tell you what, let's uh, let's just go ahead and let me demonstrate that to you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a cube here uh, to our scene. Uh, and if I go over here into the properties panel and add a level of smoothing, you can uh, see that cube collapses into sort of a a sphere there and uh, we don't want that so what you need to do is add some support edges and uh, support edges are additional edges around a uh, edge uh, to make it uh, uh, sharper or to hold its form so uh, I'm going to select a face here now I'm gonna go going to hold my control key and I'm gonna uh, click one time on this little box red box here and I'm gonna inset uh, that face and then I'm going to tap my X key and I'm gonna select tessellation by slice and I'm going to do a loop cut Right around there, I'm going to tap my enter key uh, to finalize that. Um, and as you can see, uh, right here, we've got now we have uh, one, two, three edges uh, there around this end. Now, uh, now when we uh, add a smoothing level, it holds. It will hold uh, more of that shape. If I go in here. And uh, oops, let's see here. Let's back that off and uh, add a another loop in here. And drag it to this edge right here. And then add a smoothing level. As you can see it, it'll hold that that end. So let's go ahead and control Z this, take away those extra edges and that inset. And then let's go ahead and create an inset on the top face. I'm going to drag that in a little bit once. I'm going to make another inset. And then I'm going to extrude down. Okay. And then add a level of smoothing. Okay. Now, these inside faces here kind of turn into a uh, bowl. But if I go ahead and add some some more uh, support edges, I can uh, sharpen these edges up. So I'm just going to test late by slice, and I'm going to add a another loop here. And as you can see, that tighten up that edge made it sharp and then let's add another one here and let's validate and then collapse our geometry and as you can see uh, here on top where I added uh, those extra support edges um, the top of it held its form uh, let's go ahead and control Z that and let's uh, 
add a subdivision and then right down here let's, let me pull this dynamic geometry panel up here um, there's a little ball uh, out here beside DG uh, dynamic geometry mode and we'll just click on that uh, when you have uh, this is a uh, a control cage that's up around here now when I when I uh, turn the display the cage on uh, you can see a cage around there and what I can do uh, when that cage is being used is I can select the cage I can select those edges there and I'll just ring select tap my X to add a loop there loop select that and drag it up and that that cage kind of gives you a, a little bit uh, oh I don't know what you call it a little more uh, reference or another way to work with the geometry so you can kind of see what's going on um, so as you can see the more and, and more uh, edges I I add uh, the the uh, more uh, sharp all those corners become. So just go ahead and collapse that. Uh, one one uh, disadvantage to uh, adding a subdivision is that uh, after you collapse it and uh, you have all this extra geometry added a lot of times uh, there are extra loops and uh, edges points so on and so forth that uh, you really don't need uh, you need to just add enough loops to hold uh, the form or shape that you're that you need on your model say for instance this uh, loop here uh, we really don't need it uh, see uh, after we uh, deleted that edge there it still maintained its form uh, probably go ahead and take this one away but uh, just just remember that that uh, when you when you subdivide uh, there's still going to be edges that, if you want to, you can go in there and uh, take away. Uh, the less the less geometry you have, uh, the easier it is to work with, and and only add geometry as as you need it. Okay, uh, let's go back into object selection and delete that cube, and let's go ahead and open this boat up. Um, I'm not going to add all the uh, support edges on this boat. What I'd like to do with this boat is uh, introduce you to another tool. And uh, it's under the uh, surface modeling tab. And the very last icon here is the smooth icon. And as what you can see uh, over here in the properties panel is uh, you, ha you have several different types of smoothing you can use and the one I want to show you is uh, brakes and let's turn this down to one and let's turn off that control cage and uh, what brakes does uh, I've got a level of smoothing added here but if I've, I've in the uh, brakes mode I can go along here and select the edges that I want sharp on the model and as I go along there and select those edges uh, it doesn't really add the uh, smoothing to those edges that I'm selecting and it's a tool I don't use it really a whole lot but I do use it occasionally uh, sometimes when you're having difficulty adding uh, some support edges you can use this tool and and it really is is helpful 
uh, but for me uh, lately I've been focusing on learning uh, game modeling so most of my models do not have a lot of geometry okay uh, as you can see what that's doing is sharpening those edges up every edge that I click and uh, one thing uh, you need to know is that uh, when you're when you have uh, the brakes uh, tool active you don't have to hold your shift key to add to your selections you can just start uh, selecting edges and working away Anyway, I think you can kind of uh, get the point there, what I'm talking about on that. So let's abort that. <clears throat> Another way to work with uh, that tool, which I prefer, is before you uh, activate uh, the brakes tool, let's go in there and go ahead and, and select those edges that you do want to make sharp beforehand uh, let me select a few more here and now that I'm not in the uh, brakes tool I'm just uh, I s still have to use my shift key to add to uh, my selection so anyway let me uh, select these right here and then we'll go ahead and activate the uh, brakes tool so now I'm going to go ahead and activate it. <clears throat> Reduce that down to 1. And as you can see, those edges that we had pre-selected automatically uh, were kept sharp when we activated the tool. So, um, I, hope, I hope this tutorial helps somebody. Um, there are probably at some point in time really need to uh, go back in and and uh, show some more techniques for adding uh, for maintaining a, a detail when smoothing because uh, I know that that's sure what I just showed you there was not enough to really get a grasp on it but it gives you somewhere to get started and uh, you can go in there and certainly experiment and uh, that's how I've learned that's how I'm still learning uh, let's validate this I'll collapse the dynamic geometry uh, anyway that I uh, hope that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, boat hull is uh, pretty smooth now. And you can see it would still need to work, a uh, bit of work. But they, anyway, I hope this has helped somebody, and that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we'll see you again in the next one.